Good morning, North Tonawanda High School. With your sports corner update, I'm Joe Krause. It's great to be back for the first time since June, and you guys know how we do it. So let's jump right into it. A lot has happened here at the Lumber Yard since uh, over the past few months. So we'll just start right now. So we begin the green line as the Lumberjacks had another six and three campaign and reached the second six playoffs for the third consecutive year. The biggest team of the season came in week eight when the Lumberjacks won over the Iroquois Chiefs 20-16 to at the Columbia Yard for the program's first sectional win in five years. The start of the night that game was Zach Ward, the senior two-way starter, finished with 73 passing yards along with a career-high 17 tackles. Their season, however, ended the following week when they lost to the Bennett Tigers in the Class A semifinals, 44-23. Players went on to win the Class A title. Ward was later named to the first team Western, first team All Western New York as a defensive back, where he finished with 91 tackles, four interceptions, and three fumble recoveries. Chris Levine also had a strong season in the backfield. A speedy senior finished with over 100 yards rushing in six of NT's nine games this season. And jumping Joe Dotter, which had a solid end to his career as well. The lump he. Rushed for over 800 yards and 13 touchdowns and only missed two extra point attempts. The Lumberjacks won a TNT Classic as well for the 16th consecutive year, 41-18 over the Tonawanda Warriors. From American football to European football, the Lady Dick soccer squad continued their success under first-year head coach Hannah Crouch. This fall, then 11-6 record and fourth-place finish in the Niagara Frontier League. Leading the way once again was senior Sam Hage. He finished with a team high 13 goals and 13 assists in 2016. For her five year career, she finished with 33 career goals and 31 assists for a grand total of 97 career points. Keeping on the duo, Macy Jewelli and Isabel Finley for the next three years, a freshman duo combined for 23 goals and six assists. Meanwhile, on the men's side, the team only won three games this season, but their last one was pretty memorable. For the first time since 2011, the Jack Soccer team won a sectional game, 2-1 to one final against Hutch Tech in the Class A pre-quarters thanks to Sean McManus's game winner in penalty kicks. The Violet LA Jacks finished in the middle of the pack in league play, and Julia Milbrand wrapped up her five-year career, an outstanding one to say. Milbrand will now continue at Ederson Broads University in West Virginia beginning next fall, finished her five-year run and the red and blue with 847 kills, 638 digs, 260 blocks, and 192 career, career aces, as well as two league titles. On the men's side, it was another year for the record books with a senior core of Brandon Casterline, Kyle Rambler, Jordan Fox, Ed Rory Farkas, and Ed Gath. The Lumberjacks reached the Class A semifinals for the first time since 2007 after a comeback victory at home against West Central West. So congrats to Coach Hobson and the guys this morning. And already for the way done, the winter season also has plenty of storylines. Starting on the hard one, the men's hoop squad is off to a 5-1 and one start and a 3-1 record in league play. Leading the way once again is Trevor Buck, the junior guard, has averaged 18 points per game through NC's first six games of the season and recorded his 20th game of double-digit scoring of his career this past Tuesday in their 82-46 victory against CSET. Other notable games to keep an eye out for the second half of the season include row games against Lewport, Kemore West, and Niagara Falls, and senior night against Tonawanda on February 13th. On the Lady side, Kathy Hummel takes over as head coach for the Lady Jacks and earned her first win a couple weeks ago against Niagara Falls, 33-21. The former Canisius College volleyball coach will look to have a successful season with junior guard Lindsay Petrowski and a very youthful bench. So best, best of luck to her this season. Meanwhile, around the 716, the Buffalo Sabres are starting to lose their pace in order to make the postseason just a 12, 11, and 8 record near the end of December. The return of Jack Eichel has enhanced the offense, however, with five goals and three assists. The newly acquired Kyle Acaposo leads the team with nine goals. But the biggest storyline in Western New York has been the up and down season of the Buffalo Bills. And before to start to the season, the Bills won just two of their next five games before their 33 13 victory over the Cleveland Browns this past Sunday. Head coach Rex Ryan has received a lot of scrutiny this season for the team's inconsistency on defense, most notably their meltdowns against the Raiders and Steelers. On the offensive side, LaShawn McCoy has had a Pro Bowl caliber season with over 1,100 rushing yards and 12 touchdowns and has arguably been the team's best player this season. Heading into the Christmas Eve showdown against the Miami Dolphins, the team has a slim chance of making the postseason for the first time since 1999. 
Here to share his thoughts on the Bills season and more is the long lost cousin of head coach Rex Ryan, ladies and gentlemen. Will you please welcome to the show, Mr. Ryan Ryan? Ryan, you go. welcome to the show. We got a chair for you right here. This is where I sit. Well, you can bring it. You can bring it to the camera if you want. There we go. It All spins, right. Joe. Yeah, it does. Here, we'll spin you this way. Oh, hey. There you go. Hey, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate it. Glad to so, be here, Joe. So, Ryan, Ryan, um, when did you fall in love with the game of football to start? Oh, I think it all started back hanging around with my uncle, Buddy. Uh, great coach, great man. And then his, uh, his numbnut brother, or sons, I should say. <laughs> we had some good times. So, and you, you grew up with Rex and Rob, a lot of family reunions. How do you describe growing up with them, being their cousin? I mean, lots of family reunions over the years. Lots of family reunions, lots of football talk, and uh, I would say probably lots of football talk. And then when we weren't talking about football, we were talking about the 46 defense. I think, I think you the 4-6 the four, defense, you mean? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, take a look at your resume. You've had a lot of success in various peewee leagues across the country. We can start with the cities, Walla, Washington, Chattanooga, even close to here, Waterloo, New York. So how would you describe your coaching philosophy? What goes into the mindset of Brian Ryan when he draws up his board? Well, I'm going to be a little cautious here, but my peewee teams, we were the bullies of the league. That's what we shot for. And uh, I, he won't admit it. But that's where Rex got it from, it was from me being the bullies of the league and just, you know, expounding our, our attitude and, and just dominating. That's, that was our philosophy. And, and much like Rex, uh, we had some outstanding teams. Uh, my best Pee Wee team, we went 6-3, we went and, three and we, we lost in the first round of the playoffs. Do, do you have a favorite, favorite moment, maybe like a favorite moment from your coaching career so far and do, do you ever expect to make it to the big leagues i mean you still have time but i mean do you oh uh, there's no doubt i'll i'll be there uh i'll probably be there with with rex and rob next year with the bills and that's why i'm wearing this hat uh early christmas present um i i'm pretty sure i'll be player control manager for the bills and probably work my way up through the system that way maybe even offensive coordinator uh favorite moment uh, was probably I, I had a, a quarterback, ironically enough, named Marty Sanchez, and <laughs> he had this butt fumble. <laughs> he ran into the line, hit this offensive lineman's butt, and fumbled the ball. Uh, we recovered it though, and we went on to lose that game by three points. I think you mean that's sort of similar to the Mark Sanchez story, but that's that's. Well, this pretty happened eerie. long before long Mark Sanchez. Before. Again. Long Pretty before. sure Rex took that from me, took that play from me. So while you got the Bills head, yeah, we'll start with the Bills. Start with the offense. Tyler Taylor, he showed flashes of success at quarterback. And LaShawn McCoy, he's had a pretty awesome season. But the bang up Sammy Watkins injury and Eric Wood also being lost. And it's really hindered what Anthony Lynn can do. As we got a couple more minutes here with Ryan Ryan. How would you describe the team's offense this season? What are your thoughts? Uh, yeah. I think once I get there, we're going to... You know, it's make that, oh, without a doubt, uh, Tyrod is just gonna run around and and, and throw the ball, and, and Shady's gonna get it, and we're we're gonna be good. What do, what do you think about the defense? Because we have Lorenzo Alexander going to the Pro Bowl for the 10 sack season. Kyle Williams is yeah. still play up big numbers, and also Marcel Darius, Zach Brown too. Lots of big guys, but they've collapsed, like we mentioned against the Raiders. And the Steelers. So, what is good out to you about the defense? Uh, I, I think you said the word collapse. And who is the first guy you mentioned? Lorenzo Alexander. Yeah, he's our best player. I don't even know who he is. I mean, where did he come from, Joe? Well, he, he came from the Oakland Raiders and the Washington Redskins, a free well, agent. There you side. go. It, those two teams. I mean, what have they done lately? And now we pick up their scraps and suddenly he's a pro bowler, that's the problem. I've been telling Rex that and Rob that all year. You can't just pick up these guys and say, hey, be a defense. Well, well said, Ryan. Uh, so, like we mentioned, the Bills, they still have a shot to make to the playoffs, but they're going to need a lot of help in these next two weeks. Even if they win this Saturday and next week against the Jets, 
but do you think, because you've, you've watched them this season, and being around the guys, and talking to Rex and Rob, do you think this is the year the Buffalo Bills finally make the postseason? Or should they wait until, do you want them to wait until? Well, I, I think if you keep waiting, you just keep building the suspense. I mean, <laughs> we don't want to jump in. We want to shoot for 2020 is what we want, because that's the year where everyone's like, ooh, 2020. It's got a big, it's got a nice ring to it. So nice yeah, it's, 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 we're we're getting there. It's uh, can we make it? Um, it? Win two games and everybody else loses. It's a possibility. It's very distinct. And uh, I, I think if we do, if we don't, whatever. I'll be on board. And 2020. Mark my words. 2020. 2020. You you heard it here from Ryan Ryan. Do you have any thoughts on the Super Bowl? Real quick? Uh, it's a big game. I hope to be in it someday. I uh, haven't made it with my Pee Wee teams yet, um, but one of these days we, we will. Um, you know, we're hoping to improve. We lost our quarterback last year, but uh, Super Bowl, uh, let's go with. Uh, um, I, I, I'm, I'm going to pick the Panthers to come back and, and probably, probably take on. Oh, I hate to say it because it's going to make Rex mad. The New York Jets. The New York Jets. Yeah. So we got the Panthers and the Jets. Um, so, Ryan, Ryan, thanks for coming on. Appreciate it, Joe. In your, in your Pee Wee League. Uh, one last note here. We got our vlogs from the our year in review coming up on December 30th. So be sure to check out your Twitter. But Ryan, Ryan, everybody. And thanks for tuning in with your Sports Club Update. I'm Joe Carlson. Thanks for tuning in. And we hope to see you guys soon. Take care. Happy holidays.